Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider directional derivatives and the gradient vector for a function of two variables in terms of the graph. Okay, so a function f of two variables, the graph is z is f of x comma y, the domain is a subset of R2, and there's a point x not y not in the domain. And we have a unit vector, uv. So unit vector means what? The length of the vector is 1. So u square plus v square is 1 square, which is 1. Okay. Right. So what is the directional derivative in the direction of uv of the function f at the point x not y not in graphical terms? Well, we've already sort of hinted at, at this if you've seen the video on partial derivatives in graphical terms, what did we do to get the partial derivatives in graphical terms? We took the graph and we intersected it with x equals to x naught or y equals Well, to y if you are taking the x derivative, you intersected with y equals y naught. If you're taking the y derivative, you intersect with x equals x naught, mm -hmm. right? Basically, we intersected with a plane and then we looked at the graph of function of one variable in that plane and then we took the uh, the ordinary derivative, which is just the slope of the tangent line. We have to do something similar here. But first I want to remind you of what what directional derivative means. So what is the directional derivative as an ordinary derivative? Well, do you remember the thing formulaically? It's the top product of... Well, no, that that's like if you know the gradient vector. Right now we don't know the gradient vector, just like as a De as an ordinary derivative. Definition? Yeah. Uh, that will be f. It's a difference quotient. Well, it's a limit of a limit difference, of quotient, difference quotient, quotient, but can you think of it as an ordinary derivative? Yes, we can. And so you do d dh of f of x naught plus uh, I hope I get this right, y naught plus dh at what? What value of h? Uh, zero. Zero, right. Okay, so it's just the derivative of this function, which is just saying you are moving a little bit in the direction of the vector uv. So you are sort of considering the function restricted to, so the, if this, this vector is uv and this point is x naught, y naught, you're actually considering the function along this, this line. Just make it straight, so let's see. Right. Okay, so the unit vector is just this much, the point is here, and you're considering the function restricted to that line. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then you're saying what's the derivative at zero, which means just means the derivative at the point. Okay. So this unit vector uv is telling you how to scale your line. Okay? Now we want to think of this in graphical terms. So what do we need to do? Well, we first need to do that intersect with a plane business. Hmm? Yes. It's not totally clear what the equation of that plane should be. So the first step is what is the equation of this line? Okay. Let's try to write down the equation of this line. Well, what will the equation of this line be? So this, this, is the one. this line is given by the equation, well, if u and v are both non-zero, then it's the equation y, y minus y naught over v is x minus x naught over u, right? Yes. We don't really know if u and v are non-zero. However, I can write in another form which would work even if they are zero. So v times x minus x naught, get that right, yeah, is u times y minus y naught. And this form will work even if like one of these coordinates is zero. Okay. Okay, so this is a good form. And so what's the equation of the plane? Well, it'll actually be the same equation. This is the equation of this line in R2, but the equation of the plane in R3 will be the same because the z coordinate is just freely allowed to vary. Okay? Okay? Okay. So that's the equation of the plane. Once you've got that plane, then you intersect the graph of the whole function with the plane. And then what do you do? You take the derivative on the intersected. Yeah. So first of all, you have to, yeah, first of all, you have to think of that as a graph of a new function. Now you have to coordinateize your new plane, right? How do you coordinateize it? Well, you can set this as the origin, x0, y0, comma, 0, z coordinate is 0. Set that as the origin. Set this uv as your unit vector along the 
independent variable axis and set z axis as the dependent variable axis. So let me write that down. So what is the first step? What is the first step? Intersect the plane. Intersect the intersect with the plane this plane. with the plane, I'll just redact it, equals u times y minus y naught, okay, okay, what next, now sort of coordinatize the intersection, coordinatize this plane v times x minus x naught equals u times y minus y naught with origin. So what's the origin going to be? x naught y naught. Well, it's now x naught y naught comma zero. Now you're in three dimensions, right? Uh, and the independent variable axis is The so independent variable axis has what? What's the unit vector in that? Well, uh, is sort of has unit vector u v zero. Right now you're in three dimensions. It add a zero, and the dependent variable is just the z axis. And now you want to consider the slope of the tangent line at what value of the independent variable? What value do you take the ordinary derivative at? At zero. Right. The intersection thing as a graph of a function. The intersection you got right up here. The graph. find slope of the tangent line at zero. Okay, so this is it as far as the directional derivatives are concerned. Okay, so as you rotate this direction, what's happening to the plane? You're sort of changing the plane and the slope of the tangent. So the directional derivative could change as you change the direction.